Hello, my name is Chris Kiak, and I'm the Vice President of ConnectsCAD with ConnectsTech. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate actually uh, uh, doing some of the action or animation items here with the Remember Me tool built on top of Tecla Structures. So let's begin by going to a particular view that we've already got created. So I'll zoom into this ConnectsR moment connection. I'm then zoomed into that location in the model, and you can see here that I've actually got an animation already associated with this Remember Me group. In this particular case, the action was fading the objects in. Now let's go ahead and change that to fade the objects out. I'm going to go ahead and select the objects first, so that way the Remember Me group knows that these objects are still stored with this particular group. So I'll switch it to fade out, and then I'm just going to go ahead and say save. Now if I rerun that, you'll see that those objects are then faded out or hidden. The color that has been set here is the temporary visualization state color. So let's reverse this around. Let's switch this to fade in and you'll see the objects are going to turn the temporary color of green. So let's highlight the objects again and then we're just going to go ahead and make sure that we have this one selected and press save. That's going to then update that action for this particular view. So let's just go ahead and double click. Now we should see those objects fade in and there the animation is complete and the temporary visualization state color of green has been set. Let's change the color to a different color such as cyan. Again we need to make sure all the objects are selected. This uh, remember me group is currently selected in the list and then we just go ahead and say save. Let's load that back up and this time it's going to fade into the color of cyan. If you don't want any temporary color to be set you can just clear the color and leave it blank as shown here. When you do this, this will then just use the current object representations that are set in the model. So again, let's highlight the objects and let's change this to a different one. Let's do flicker. We'll then just go ahead and save and then we'll reload and see what happens. So here it flickers and then it just uses the current object representation for those parts in the model. All of the actions or animations that we've seen so far that we see in most of the uh, drop-down list here can be done within the Tecla Structures Viewer License, which means that you don't need a, a model authoring license in order to use this animation functionality. However, the lower and lock and the move uh, functionality, they require you to have at least an engineering license or any other model authoring license within Tecla Structures. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at one of those lower and lock options. Here I'm just going to go to a different view. I'll be zoomed up here to this particular beam assembly and then you'll notice that a temporary beam is lowered and locked into place to show the animation of how that assembly will be installed out in the field. We use lower and lock quite a bit over at ConnectsTech because a lot of our moment and gravity connections are all based to be safe and lowered and locked into the connecting columns or beams in place in the field. So you'll see that we try to animate and communicate this style of connecting and installing things using the lower and lock functionality. So again, I'll double click on that and then we can see that action or that animation completed. Here, the beam and the connector at the end of that beam just lowers and locks into place and fits into the connection pieces that are on the column. All right, so let's go ahead and try this out ourselves. So we'll go to a different view here in the model, and we'll try this lower unlock functionality over on this gravity beam. So the way this works is you can either select the part, or in this case, I'll select the entire assembly, and then I'm going to have that piece lowered and locked. So I'm going to switch the action item here to lower and lock. I have that particular piece selected, and then I may even want to change the color when it's all said and done to, say, cyan, and then I'll just go ahead and press save. Now what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and double click and activate that lower and lock gravity connection. Now the first time you do the lower and lock on that assembly, it is going to have to create the temporary reference model, so you're going to see this little progress bar on the first assembly that it's animating. Once that file has been created, it will no longer show that and it'll just insert and lower that assembly into place. So again, if I double click on it this time, notice now the assembly just lowers and comes into place.
All right, so now let's go ahead and move stuff. So I'm in a different model here, and I'm just going to do some basic things to show you what's possible. If you have uh, things like trucks um, or job site equipment, trailers, pumps, things that you, or even a crane, um, anything that you kind of want to move around and sort of animate other than the simple lower and lock um, type of animation or movement, you can use this functionality to do so. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first, uh, I'm going to save this away, but let's move this up. So uh, actually all we need to do is let's clear this and move this up 12 inches. Right? So that's going to be that location and I'm going to say save. Those objects are saved and then in this particular case let's move this over in the X direction 24 inches. And then we'll save that as move stuff 2. Then we'll do this one here and we'll just say negative 2 foot. And we'll call that move stuff 3. And then we'll go ahead and move this one down. And then we'll call that move stuff four. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo those moves. So that way I'm back to where I was at originally. And then what I can do is I can just go ahead and double click on each one of these. Now notice the objects then move. This object moves next then here, and then here. So essentially you can save away all of the different animations and things that you want. You can then combine this along with some of the other actions like fading in, fading out, flickering, and all the other different things to kind of make a more robust animation of different things happening on the job site. You can move native objects and assemblies here, kind of like what I see in the model, where I have these parts welded and cut and fitted. You can move those, and the Remember Me tool will uh, move those correctly. But you may not uh, get it to move all as a complete unit when you're selecting objects. If you're doing things like complex rotations or movements or flying around, um, the Remember Me tool may not do a very good job of that when these are all individual loose objects. One suggestion is is that if you've got something that you like and you've modeled it here and you'd like to move that as a group easily through the model and rotate it and do different things, my suggestion is to save those objects as a reference model. And before you save them, uh, move the objects that you've modeled over here towards the origin, orientate them with the positive x and y direction, and that will then, when you export the IFC or DWG or whatever reference model you want to export, it'll then allow the movement and the local coordinate system of that group of objects to be based on the origin in the model. So this is kind of what I've done here with this box. If I now move rotate this, so let's actually say move stuff number five here, and we'll say that this is our original location. This is the reference model. So we'll save that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say move special rotate. So I'll select this point here, and then I'm going to say 45 degrees. So that like rotated at 45 degrees, but then I'm also going to tilt it up a little bit. So let's say move special rotate about the line. And let's pick, uh, let's see, this corner and this corner here. And let's rotate it up another 10 degrees. So I've rotated it horizontally and vertically here in the model. And we're just going to store this as move stuff number six. So we'll then hit save. And now if I go back to move stuff number five, it moves the camera brings it there, and then here moves the camera, and then rotates it and brings it up. So again, my suggestion is is when you're moving a group of objects all at once, and say they have cuts and bolts and different things, export it as like a DWG or an IFC file, and then reinsert it, and then do your animations and kind of show whatever you'd like to do with it. All right, so those are some of the basics of the animation actions that you can do. Again, all of these ones here, um, from the first one down to transparent, can all be done in the viewer license, but the lower and lock and the move functionality do require a model authoring license of Tecla structures. Keep an eye out for some additional training videos that just show a variety of different use cases of the Remember Me tool. The first three videos or four videos are just showing you the uh, basic functionality and how to use the tool, but I'll periodically post different kind of use cases and specific scenarios where the Remember Me tool comes in really handy. All right, thanks.